read a little bit from my new book called Not That Kind of Girl. And Not That Kind of Girl is a story of a girl named Natalie, who is a sort of high-functioning type A student council president. Um, and she takes it upon herself to rehabilitate a pack of ferocious, flirty freshman girls who have kind of taken over her school. Um, while simultaneously sort of having a secret relationship with a boy um, that she's not comfortable sharing the details uh, of that relationship with, with people who know her. Um, so this scene takes place on a pep rally day when Natalie should be sort of enjoying the attention on a job well done decorating the senior hallway, but um, some people sort of steal her thunder. There was another noise. Music, a dancey song that I knew from the radio, only played faster and with more bass, growing steadily louder. The crowd suddenly parted. Autumn and I found ourselves pushed backward until we were pressed up against the lockers. I stood on my tiptoes. Ten freshman girls marched down our hallway in two lines, as if they were in a parade. They were led by Spencer. She had a pink iPod strapped to her bicep, and she was holding two white portable speakers, one in each hand. She strutted like a model on a runway. Autumn jumped, straining to see. Doesn't she know that freshmen aren't allowed in the senior hallway on pep rally day? Of course, rules like that were ridiculous. You could go anywhere you wanted. Still, they were rules. And there seemed to be lots of them Spencer didn't know. The girls had their hair up in ponytails, tied with curls of satin ribbon, and white terry cloth shorts that were way too short for any real athletic activity. I didn't recognize all of them, but I did spot Susan Choi, who was another one of my freshman reps. Each one wore the same fitted blue child-sized t-shirt with a pair of bulbous footballs positioned like pasties over their boobs. And above them, the same single word was printed across the chest, curling in a perfect arch. Rostitute. Autumn shook her head, what the hell? <laughs> The girls passed, and I noticed that underneath each swishing ponytail tip, the name and number of a varsity player was, print was printed across the back of the shirts. Domsky, number 47. Phillips, number 4. And on the back of Spencer's, Hughes, number 14. Suddenly it hit me, like an SAT vocab word after breaking down the root. Ross Academy plus prostitute equals Rostitute. The realization seemed to trickle out of my head and through the crowd. I saw delight on the faces of the football team and sneers on the faces of the cheerleaders. Suddenly, the freshman girls stopped on a dime. Spencer made the music go full blast. They changed formation from two lines into a diamond shape and then began to dance. Most of the girls looked painfully awkward. They were stiff and nervous, spinning at the wrong time, keeping their eyes on Spencer for cues. But Spencer was different. She made eye contact with the people watching her, even though her curls were swishing in her face. Her moves were simultaneously precise and sexy as hell. She was the star of this show. Mrs. B, who is uh, Natalie's mentor and a sort of big time feminist at the school, Mrs. B reached out and grabbed Spencer by the arm. I'd never seen her look so mad. A few people actually booed Miss B for stopping the dance, mostly the guys from the sound of it. Mrs. B started to look around the hallway, possibly for me. I moved my head so it was behind someone else's. I was that embarrassed, and I didn't want to get involved. The hallway got quiet, except for the music. Everyone was watching, waiting to see what was going to happen, and I felt like I couldn't breathe. These shirts are highly offensive, Spencer, Mrs. B said. Not to mention completely against school policy. You girls must change immediately. It was like slow motion watching Spencer grin, but I only saw it for a second before her face got covered up because she took off her shirt right there in the middle of the hallway. Her bra was a pink gingham number with a tiny rosette in the center, underwire working overtime to hoist and enhance a modest amount of cleavage. The grin returned as a shirtless Spencer twisted the wad of material in her hands. I'll just turn it inside out, Miss B. Problem solved. The hallway erupted again. It was pure energy, and the freshmen were drunk on it. The other girls grabbed at the hems of their shirts, too, but before anyone else could strip, Mrs. B had Spencer by the arm and dragged her down the hall. As she passed me, she winked. Thanks.